As an autistic person, are you experiencing a lot of resistance towards the change that people want from you? So today, I'm going to be talking about pathological demand avoidance and um, just talk to you about my experience last week uh, uh, using Reddit. Uh, I've only been, I only went on Reddit for a week and I got off of it because the Reddit people did not like me at all and did not like what I had to say and they did not and they thought I was insulting and I don't think I was, but the bottom line is that they were so resistant to even having a just me putting a transcript of these YouTube videos onto Reddit and uh, changing it around a little bit to make it into an article that might be interesting. But when people would read the article, they would get all out of whack. They would, um, you know, go on to uh, my uh, YouTube channel and they were voting down my uh, videos that they didn't even watch. They were writing uh, that you know, on Reddit that, that I was putting out misinformation, even though I'm using clinical research and, um, you know, and putting out the references to anywhere between six and 10 uh, clinical studies done based on science and based on peer review, and uh, they just didn't like it at all. And one of the reasons could be, and I don't know why they were so upset, but there is this thing, it's called pathological demand avoidance. And it's and um, I'm just gonna read a little bit about it. Um, so it's a part of resistance. So a lot of people, they, um, you know, when they're in their patterns, because part of autism is repetitive patterns. So if you're repeating your patterns and somebody's asking you to change those patterns or even think about what those patterns are and think about what you can do to change those patterns so you can have a better life, um, there could be a lot of resistance. And so that's what this pathological demand avoidance uh, is. And it's, it's, um, it says it's because I'm looking at this uh, booklet that I downloaded off of, um, I think it's in Australia, but they, um, yeah, they call themselves the PDA Society. And um, so I had, hadn't heard of this, excuse me, until a couple days ago when I did catch a video on YouTube and I'll try and uh, link her video into um, the bottom of my video and uh, so you can listen to her as well as me because I think she knows a lot more about it than I do. I'm just learning about it. But uh, National Autistic S Society explains autism as a lifelong, lifelong development disability that affects how people communicate and interact with the world. So uh, pathological demand avoidance is widely understood to be a profile on the autism spectrum avoiding the, um, involving the avoidance of everyday demands and, and the use of social strategies as part of this avoidance. So they will avoid trying to be socially interactive when, they, when a person has this. So it talks about... Um, so, uh, currently defined as persistent difficulties with social communication and social interaction, restricted repetitive patterns of behaviors, activities of interests, and that describes autism. And um, so it talks about there's key features of PDA, which are resisting and avoiding the ordinary demands of, of life using social strategies as part of the avoidance, appearing sociable but lacking some understanding. Individuals may appear more sociable than one might expect, with instance, uh, more conventional use of eye contact and convention conventional skills, but, 
but they mask underlying differences and difficulties in social interaction and communication. They experience intense emotions and mood swings, appearing comfortable in role play, pretense, and fantasy, sometimes to an extreme extent, focusing insistently often on other people with PDA repetitive and restrictive interests are very are often social in nature relating to real or fictional people. The need for control, which is often driven by anxiety or automatic threat response in the face of demands, a tendency not to respond to conventional approaches in support, parenting, or teaching. So I think I, I experienced some of the results of this and was on the receiving end of this. So I took myself off of Reddit because the bottom line is I'm high functioning autistic and I'm learning this stuff and the people I was dealing with, um, I guess I was harming them and I apologize because I didn't mean to do that. All I'm trying to do is put out what's working for me and what the science is and I was getting a lot of blowback. And so I'm just not gonna go on Reddit. And if that affects how many people watch my YouTube videos, oh well. I'm just gonna stick into my lane, do my thing, and whatever happens, happens. Because this project started off as me just talking to the camera and just trying to learn more about myself and put this stuff together and just put it up to uh, YouTube for if anybody else wanted to watch it. And then, of course, I wanted more viewers. And so I reached out to Reddit and uh, they didn't want to view what I had to say. They didn't want to read what I had to say. And um, it is what it is. So I'm moving on. So, um, so one of the things is that when we resist things, um, I'm reading in the process of reading this book. It's a Japanese concept called Kaizen. Most of you have never heard of that, but most of you have heard of Toyota. So Toyota uses this philosophy that's a Japanese philosophy going back hundreds, if not thousands of years. And what it is, is taking little steps um, as a matter of fact, uh, after World War II, when uh, Japan was destroyed completely, and uh, so they actually, the Americans that helped rebuild uh, Japan actually used the philosophy of Kaizen to rebuild Japan. And Toyota uh, took, took that to uh, fruition because Toyota is the world's largest car company today and the highest quality uh, car company today because of these small uh, changes. So when somebody makes a big change in their life, they can get into what's uh, called a limbic hijack, which is you go, go into fight, flight, or freeze. And when you're in any of those three things, fight, you're going to be fighting the change. Flight, you're going to be running away from the change. Freeze, you're just going to stop and then you're going to miss the bus. And uh, then you're going to miss out on life. So if you're freezing, that's not going to help either. So it has to do with your amygdala and your limbic uh, system that that is detecting uh, that can that can cause you into going into fear. So one of the things is that what you wanna do is whatever change you wanna do, you wanna break down that change into as many steps as you can. And if that change takes longer than you expect, that's okay. Because what you wanna do is you wanna decrease anxiety uh, because that's what happens with the, uh, with the um, limbic response is it causes mostly anxiety because when you're anxious you're going to be fighting people you're going to be fighting your own ideas you're going to be yelling and screaming and that's not going to help and we know about the tantrums that autistic people can go through including myself they're not pretty 
And um, so if you're fighting, that's not going to help. If you're running away, that's not going to get the job done that you want to get done, the, the goals that you want to have. Um, and if you freeze, uh, you know, it's going to take you a long, long time to even get past step one. And so coming back to this is you want to chunk the idea down. So you want to take whatever idea it is and you want to break it down into smaller parts and you want to look at, well, what can I do today to just do one thing today to make this happen? So, and, and then you may be able to do more than you realize because, and then you become impatient and you're like, oh, well, the, all these steps, they're really, I could do, you know, two or three of these in one day. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're getting them done and then, but just make sure that when you start speeding up the steps and getting more stuff done, that you're not going too fast. Because, you know, um, I used to be addicted to drugs. And one of the things about relapse, one of my pet things that I believe about relapse from to going back to uh, back to your drug addiction, back to my drug addiction, was that I was having too quick of results and then that wasn't feeling good and then all of a sudden I I you know got in I was scared I was just scared and then I would use again and then destroy all the progress because I was trying to jump and do it too quickly so you just need to slow it down you need to either write something down or you need to figure out some way of tracking your progress because whatever you want to do, whatever those goals are, you just got to track your progress. And then you got to just make sure that each and every day you do something, anything that moves you forward. Even if all it is is just thinking about what you want to do, um, you know, the next day um, and then write that down because uh, then you can get it done and then you can make it happen and then you can change your life for the better because that's the bottom line is there's a lot of people out there, especially you know in our autism community that people are, have been disappointed in the change that they've tried to make. Uh, the people that um, are trying to help them make the changes don't understand what's going on in our head because all they see is we lash out at them. And then, of course, they don't like that. And we don't like doing that either. But the progress is too quick. It's too overwhelming. So what you got to do is slow your roll. You got to make sure that you slow it down and just make little changes. So I'll go in more into this Kaizen uh, thing, but uh, I just want to let let people know about this, uh, which I've never even heard of. Uh, I think this place in, is in Australia for where the uh, thing is from. But And then the girl that put up her YouTube video, so I'll, I'll try and reference her. I'll try and find uh, her her video. It was a very good video, better than mine. So I understand why why she gets more views than I do, but you know I'm just trying my best. And uh, if the best ain't ain't good enough, well, this is all I got for right now. So uh, have a good day. Uh, I'm cruising through this thing. Yeah, it's called. It's actually in the UK. It's called PDAsociety.org.uk, and it's a charity. And uh, many thanks to Sally Cat for making this uh, that I'm referencing. I'll try and find a link to this and put that up there too. And uh, so just make some progress, but you don't have to make all the progress that you want. Just make some progress and move forward. And have a great day, and I'll catch you on the other side.